Today, I am reviewing the Hoka Tecton X. But wait, wait, disclaimers. Of course, I am not being paid for this review video. Hoka will not see this video before it's posted. And let's be honest, Hoka won't see it after it's posted. I've got less than 5,000 subscribers. Hoka isn't even going to know this video exists. Now, I can't possibly have run in this shoe for long enough to truly know how it will feel over the long term, or at how many hundreds of miles the lugs are going to wear out, or if the upper mesh will eventually tear. I also haven't had time to truly test performance in dry weather, rain, snow, cruisy California trails, or super technical high alpine trails. However, it is important to get a video out in a timely manner, while the shoe is still new enough that people are searching for it. So today, I'm going to be mostly taking some wild guesses about the performance of the shoe so that I can get a video up quickly, capitalize on trending search terms, and maybe snag a few more subscribers. This is basically free marketing work, which will net me about $8 in AdSense revenue for a four hour project making my hourly rate a whopping $2 an hour. Now, Target is hiring at $18 an hour, but there's ego and glory in being on YouTube, and people would just look down on me if I worked at Target, so here we are. In size 10, the shoe weighs nine and a half ounces, and we can pretend that's meaningful, and we can compare the weight of this shoe against others, but if I lost five pounds of belly fat, that would have way more of an impact. Five pounds is 80 ounces, or like eight pairs of shoes. So yeah, weight isn't the biggest factor here. If you've got wide feet like me, it's probably a bit narrow. Hoka has been trending to more narrow shoes in recent years. Uh, I will say the orange color is quite stylish and good for social media, especially if you're running single track with greenery, the orange will stand out nicely. The lugs are a little short. It definitely feels more like a Western State shoe than a Hard Rock shoe. And I say that without having run either of those races, but it just feels like the correct thing to say. Now, it doesn't seem to have that much stability, so if you've got messed up ankles like me, this might not be the shoe for you. It feels durable, but I'm not really sure how to test that. I'm gonna go run it over with my car and see if it still resembles a shoe. Okay, it still looks like a shoe. It passes the durability test. The carbon plate in a trail shoe is something that seems like a marketing gimmick. So I have no idea if the plate is actually gonna make the shoe faster, but carbon plates are all the rage. So yeah, it makes sense from a marketing perspective to put it in a trail shoe. If you like colorful shoes with a soft ride, but aren't running anything too technical, and you've got $200 to spare, the Hoka Tecton X might be the right shoe for you. But shoes are very personal, so who knows. Please comment below if you've actually used this shoe quite a bit and have some real insights, or just comment for fun. It helps the algorithm. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and be sure to subscribe.